and a modern-day Battle of Lepanto. A history lesson, I think, applies to the present we are living in. That is the focus of tonight's preamble. Now, before I get to this historic battle, let's take a quick leap back to 1964. The speech that launched Ronald Reagan's political career marked his first big address after leaving the Democrat Party, a party that had left him first. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war, and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. Well, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Reagan's enemy was the Soviet Union, a murderous and repressive regime responsible for the murder of millions during the horrific reign on Earth. Now let's go a little further into world history. Some who are educated in GovEd may be under the impression that the Western world's first engagement with radical Islam was when the towers fell. In truth, in the late 1500s, the enemy of Western civilization was the Ottoman Empire. The Muslim Turks had undertaken relentless attacks and incursions into Europe for decades. Much like today, Europe was in chaos back then. The states were warring amongst themselves, and on top of all that, they had to deal with ever-present threats from the Turks. Pope Pius V organized a resistance to the Turks, made up uh, of the major Catholic powers of Southern Europe, the Iberian Peninsula and Italian Peninsula, specifically the Spanish Empire, as well as the Italian Maritime Powers. It was called the Holy League. These European powers didn't trust each other very much. They had a lot of history, and much of it was littered with betrayal, intrigue, and a lot of hurt feelings. But Pope Pius V was able to convince them that the Ottoman Empire was an existential threat to the beliefs they all shared. Thus, a fleet of warships was assembled to take out the vast Turkish armada. In 1571, the Battle of Lepanto took place off the coast of Greece. The fleet of the Holy League came together just in time to engage the vastly larger fleet of the invading Ottoman Empire. And here's where many Catholics believe God intervened. Pope Pius V ordered all the Catholic nations to pray the rosary leading up to this battle. Indeed, the beleaguered Holy League fleet saw many of their fighters pause, take a knee, and say the rosary. As the story goes, the ships were ready to face off. The Ottoman Empire had the winds at their back, and the Holy Fleet was, well, at a severe disadvantage, nearly dead in the water. But for some inexplicable reason, the winds shifted. The Ottoman sails went flaccid, and the sails of the Holy League were filled. Some credit the power of prayer and the rosary. And despite being outgunned and outnumbered, many Catholics believe through the power of intercession and the intercession of the rosary and prayer, the Western fleet decimated the Turks. That singular victory pushed Islam into retreat, and the West leapt forward. And fast forward to today. And once again, our civilization is being threatened. Marxists of every race, color, and creed are taking to the streets. BLM, Antifa, and their left-wing agents are spreading fear and terror wherever they rear their ugly heads. Meanwhile, our civilized society is under attack as George Soros-funded district attorneys like DA uh, out there in Los Angeles, George Gascon, like Kim Fox in Chicago, and Kim Gardner in St. Louis. They're all working to keep criminals on the streets victimizing innocent Americans in the process. In left-wing cities, local psychopaths and left-wing governments defund the police and release violent criminals to commit more crime against an unsuspecting populace. Big tech, like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and their parent company, Google, actively work to undermine American values like free speech. GovEd, Disney, and Apple are shoving perversion into the pop culture and into our children's classrooms. It's gotten to the point where Apple has gone anti-science, producing a pregnant man emoji. Now, I call this the beer belly man emoji. I refuse to dumb myself down to Apple's level. Common sense folks are calling out these science deniers. A Senator Rand Paul's wife tweeted the following, quote, Chinese third graders are learning multivariable calculus. Our third graders are being taught that men can have babies. This will not end well. She's right. It won't end well for the West's civilized society. And sadly, we don't have a political party aligned to stand up to all this nonsense. Instead, the Uniparty, made up of corrupt politicians like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Mitt Romney, Ilhan Omar and Liz Cheney, 
Maxine Waters and Adam Crying Kinsinger, Lisa Murkowski to Ayanna Presley and Rashida M.F. Tlaib and Susan Collins, among others. They work to thwart the will of the American people, undermine the Constitution, and rob our republic of our God-given rights of self-rule. Our once proud and trusted institutions like the FBI, the intelligence community, the aforementioned GovEd, and the White House appear to be compromised by corruption and influence from America's enemies. The American people, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Conservatives, and traditional liberals, they all seem to be seeing the same thing as nearly three-quarters of our population believe that Joe Biden is compromised by our enemy, Communist China. It's gotten so bad that one of Joe Biden's handlers dressed up like the Easter Bunny, preventing the meat puppet from talking about his debacle in Afghanistan. Real leaders have visited war-torn Ukraine to show solidarity with Ukraine's president. Joe Biden claims he's ready to go. Will you send senior officials to Ukraine? Will you send senior officials to Ukraine? Well, we're making that decision now. Thank you. Who would you send? What was the reason? Are you ready to go? Are you? Yeah. But then, one of the people who's really in charge of Biden's life, Obama's Jen Psaki, set the record straight, saying, we will not send Joe Biden to Ukraine. Now, that's a quote. Who is the we Jen Psaki is talking about? Who is really running our country into the ground? And which government do they really serve? By all evidence, the pain and suffering that we've seen unleashed on our country in the last 16 months, it's clear Team O'Biden doesn't serve the United States. Is it a time we knew their names? Is it a time we knew the masters they actually serve? This is our battle of Lepanto. This is our time of choosing. The Holy League battled radical Islam. Reagan battled communist Russia. And now the next battle is forming. On one side, you and me and the majority of America, the defenders of the great civilized ideas. None of the major religions, for example, including Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, believe in the wholesale slaughter of kids in the womb. Yet those who claim to be devout members of those faiths, like Joe Biden, advocate the slaughter of innocent lives in the womb, even wanting to force all of us to pay for it. There are those of us who believe that children belong to their parents, not to the state. There are those among us who believe in the rule of law under God. In his fight, Ronald Reagan said this, quote, freedom prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. When our founding fathers passed the First Amendment, they sought to protect churches from government interference. They never intended the to construct a wall of hostility between government and the concept of religious belief itself. The First Amendment of the Constitution was not written to protect the people of this country from religious values. It was written to protect religious values from government tyranny. And with the mention of that word tyranny, that leads us to the other side of this battle. The Marxists, the Satanists, the big government tyrants, the perverts in GovEd, the backstabbers, in the FBI's leadership, those who claim our children as their own, the propagandists and the liars and the biased press, and those who deny reality and science to force their warped totalitarian view on those of us who refuse to be ruled. Our economy is on the precipice. Our nation is hanging by a thread. Our military is being openly attacked from within. It's time for those of us who value freedom that we all came together. It's time we all showed the wisdom of Pope Pius V. It's time we buried our long-time distrust of those of us, you know, who have a lot to lose, all of us, even our aforementioned enemies. We can no longer afford that distrust. It's time we recognized the real threat that is upon us. The battle that lies ahead is winnable if we quit letting our enemies divide us. I'm not being rhetorical when I say everything we hold dear is now in the line.